three. Hello and welcome back to the Stronger Than Steel podcast. This is a quick wrap-up episode of day one of the NFL draft. So obviously the big news is that with the 30th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers selected TJ Watt, the outside linebacker out of the University of Wisconsin, and the younger brother of J.J. Watt. Austin, what were your instant reactions of not only this pick, but the fact that we both got uh, this mock selection correct in uh, picking T.J. Watt for the first round? I, I feel good that we both got it right, but I will say, as Karis McKinley got as far down as he did, I started holding hope that I actually would get the dream guy. So I was kind of, I was a little depressed, even though T.J. Watt is good, and he was my draft pick, and I was, uh, he was my projected pick. It was just sad seeing, because I, I, I called it, too. I was sitting in a room with my friends when it happened. And I, I saw the Seahawks starting to trade. I was like, just don't trade with And they traded with the Falcons. And at that point, I knew Tegaris McGinley was, was going to be gone. But uh, he said what? Other than that, I'm really excited for him. I seeing, I hope he's as good as his brother. That would be amazing. Or even just half as good, probably. That would, that would fit. So uh, I don't see him playing for the first half of the, half of the year, as, as but... I think that's good. I think he needs some training, and I, I like that. What do you think of TJ Watt? Well, I'm, I was mainly excited just because we got it right, and it makes me feel like everything that we did this off season was validated because we we got the first uh, pick pick right. But in all seriousness, for the Steelers, I think uh, fans can be pretty happy with this selection. Uh, TJ Watt has a lot of things to like about him. Yeah, he's not. He's probably a little raw as far as his skills go, but uh, J.J. Watt, his brother, actually said that he's probably further along in his, uh, as far as his track goes to being a full-time starter than J.J. was. Uh, J.J. actually ran a slower 40-yard dash time, and uh, T.J. had a better a better time at the Combine. So while T.J. might not be the uh, dominant force that J.J. has been over the past you know five, six years, TJ is someone that I think could become a very solid contributor and I think has a ceiling as like a Pro Bowl level outside linebacker. But going back to the overall state of the draft, I think you and I were both noticing that with all those offensive players surprisingly going uh, early and not many of the edge rushers and cornerbacks going first, you and I uh, were definitely talking about how exciting it seemed that the Steelers were going to possibly have a chance to sort of pick their, uh, have, have their pick as far as who they wanted, but Ultimately, all those edge rushers started going quickly, and uh, it was Watt that fell to the Steelers. I actually thought the Packers were going to take T.J. Watt, but uh, they had the pick right before Pittsburgh, but they traded with the Browns, who had quite an interesting uh, first round of their own, and the Browns got a tight end, uh, which was kind of surprising, but uh, the Packers were traded out of the first round, and that gave the Steelers the chance to pick Watt. So based on what we've seen and talked about Watt already, what are some things you like about him and some things you don't like about him? Um, how about you start first? I, I got to take more time to think about this. Okay. Well, the first thing I like uh, when I see T.J. Watt is that I I know what, uh, what his family brings to the table as far as uh, athleticism. He's a very good athlete. And he has a very high motor. This guy is never going to give up, give up on plays, and that's something that uh, you know. Just like James Harrison, I uh, I really appreciate with those players who never take plays off and give it their all on every play. That alone is pretty nice, but you know he's also pretty skilled too. He knows how to uh, use his body to get, uh, excuse me, use his raw athleticism to get. I'm I'm sorry. I keep uh, I keep having to restart here but I really like what TJ Watt has to offer as far as a uh, athlete alone he kind of reminds me of Bud Dupree as far as uh, someone who was just a great athlete coming out of school but we I think we have a better idea of what he's going to be and yes he probably won't contribute on day one but he also probably doesn't need to as far as a uh, premier pass rusher I think this is someone that the Steelers can really look forward to uh, to being a solid contributor at outside linebacker for years to come, and that's something the Steelers haven't had really since Jason Worlds was a somewhat consistent pass rusher in the mid, uh, was it 2012, 13? And uh, was he on the team in 14? I think he was, yeah. But really, they haven't had a dominant pass rusher since Lamar Woodley in 2011, give or take, and uh, he might have a chance to be that next guy. 
Um, things I don't like about him, obviously he uh, he's still a little ways away from being a complete player, and he's going to have some time to uh, sit on the bench probably before he becomes an everyday player. But like I said, I don't think that's going to be a big deal, and I think he's going to be at his best when the games matter most. And it's going to be interesting to see that Christmas Day game when the Steelers play in Houston against the Texans, seeing the uh, Watt brothers go back and forth on the defensive lines of their respective teams. Austin, are you ready now? Uh, yeah, so I like what you said about uh, it doesn't matter that he's going to start in the half year because you, you make a good point. I wasn't even thinking of that. The you know, idea is to ease James Harrison out of the role because we, we obviously like seeing James Harrison start at the moment. So it, it, we wouldn't want to see T.J. Watt immediately, but it, it would be, it's going to be nice to hopefully see – hopefully he's ready by like half the year where he can start coming in for James Harrison, splitting reps with him a little bit. Then uh, what else I like about him? I really, <laughs> this is going to sound stupid, I really like his association with, with, with his brother because I feel like uh, J.J. Watt helped him in the draft. I feel like J.J. Watt still might help him. I'm not I'm not sure. That might be a little bit of a stretch. But I like that he basically has uh, a champion to train with that's really close to him. Uh, other things I really liked about him, he's, um, he, uh, <laughs> This is another stupid one. He's a pass rusher. If the Steelers took something other than a pass rusher, I would have been very sad about it. <laughs> but uh, the only things I really don't like about him is, is that, uh, oh, no. <laughs> he His really is acceleration. That's probably it. Uh, like, he, I think he's going to be a consistent option. I think he's going to be mid-tier. And I, I really like this pick. So that's really about it. Yeah, um... You know, I, I really, uh, that's something that you, you do bring up a good point. I don't think it's a stupid point to bring up. The J.J. actually did help him. You know, his family is full of athletes. They have another brother who's a fullback in uh, San Diego right now. And, uh, you know, it was probably it was probably helpful that they all, uh, they probably all gave uh, T.J. some pointers. So, like I was said earlier, J.J. Uh, probably helped him get a little further along than uh, where J.J. was at this point in his career. So there's definitely that to like. And then the other aspect you have to look at is that uh, James Harrison last year was sparingly used in the first half and was used a lot in the second half, and that kind of helped preserve him where he was good in the second half. Now I think we can kind of do the reverse, uh, where he we can play him a lot early, and hopefully he's good then, but then we can kind of lay off while uh, TJ uh, starts to play a little more in the second half, and then Harrison can be used more of a situational guy every now and then. Uh, to give guys like Bud Dupree and TJ a break, but overall, I think this is a very uh, a very good pick for the Steelers. Uh, yeah, they could have had. Uh, it would have been nice to get other guys like Derek Barnett or Tack McKinley, but I think this is a pick that Steelers fans can be very excited about going forward. And uh, I'm looking forward to round two. So that brings me to my next point, Austin. Where do you think the Steelers go here now at round two? Oh, easily cornerback. Uh, here's hoping to get they get Sidney Jones. Uh, and honestly, like I said, I wouldn't be if the Steelers really were scared that Sidney Jones was coming off the table. I wouldn't be mad if they wanted to trade up for him. But otherwise, if it's not Sidney Jones, I'm kind of hoping for a cornerback. There's still a plethora of good cornerbacks left. Uh, I sh- I in my mock draft, if anybody listened to that, I had three cornerbacks going by pick fifteen, and only one was gone by pick fifteen in the draft. So. There is still a lot of good talent there for cornerback. Who do you want the Steelers to take? Well, I, like you, want to see the Steelers take Sidney Jones. And I think he'd be a good pick. Uh, I don't know if he will be available, but for those who don't know, rounds two and three are day two, and then the final uh, four rounds are day three. Uh, I would like to see the Steelers go cornerback, but I also wouldn't be mad if they went inside linebacker because I do know that uh, they are uh, running out of... uh, that, that position probably isn't as deep as cornerback, so if they addressed inside linebacker, I wouldn't be that mad about it either, but I'm just mainly happy the Steelers got their biggest need fulfilled with uh, this pick in T.J. Watt, and that's a pretty big load off. Now they can work on other positions, but I do think, yes, cornerback is probably the most important position the Steelers look at now. So now that we've kind of looked at the Steelers draft, what do you think about the rest of the NFL in uh, the first round, Austin? Uh, well, firstly... I'm going to say that shout-out to the 49ers for pulling the best move I've seen in a really long time. I had them taking Solomon Thomas in my mock draft at number two, 
and they decided to finesse the Bears into giving them uh, the third pick where they still got Solomon Thomas, and then they got uh, the Bears' third rounder, uh, their fourth rounder, and the third round for next year in the Bears for moving up, for switching picks. They finessed the heck out of the Bears, and so good for them. That was my first thought of, of the draft. Uh, one of the most surprising things for me, though, I, th- I think it was Cleveland trading into the first round three times. Or I mean, they already had two picks in there, but trading back and then the third pick with the, the Packers. The third, I'm going to focus specifically on the third pick, David and Joku. I thought that was the weirdest pick, the weirdest reason to trade up ever. I don't know who was really going to take him. I, I, they might have gotten scared that the Steelers were going to take him because some mock drafts had us taking him. But I, I didn't even feel like it was a fit for the Browns. Like, they are, they already have, um, oh, no, his, uh, Gary Barnage. There we go. I, I, his name escaped me for a second. They already had Gary Barnage. I mean, I guess he's getting older, but uh, I was still surprised. I felt like they could have addressed another position w- where they needed more help. I feel like that was not the, not the way to go. But, I mean, the Browns will be the Browns. Uh, what did you think of the rest of the, the draft? Well, touching quickly on the uh, Browns, I thought – as soon as they traded with the Packers, I thought, oh, maybe the Steelers kind of like smokescreen of bringing in quarterbacks got the Browns thinking that, oh, we, we got to take our quarterback now in case the Steelers take our guy. But then they come out with the that tight end, and I really, I don't even know what to make of it. Uh, the Browns draft as a whole in the first round is kind of confusing to me. I thought they were, they were going to address the quarterback position with one of their picks. Didn't, they ended up with three. Uh, obviously they picked Miles Garrett with the first pick, not too surprising. Kind of surprised they went with Jabril Peppers. I thought he was going to be falling a little more considering his diluted sample they found uh, for, I believe it was a drug test. But uh, they got him too, and I really don't understand the tight end pick. Maybe he, they know something about him that we all don't. Uh, it is interesting to note that this time it seems like they're trying to build a team around a quarterback before getting the quarterback because before they've drafted quarterbacks uh, first and that hasn't really ended well uh, on, on more than one occasion, obviously. So maybe this is the right move for them. Uh, I don't know what Hugh Jackson uh, has uh, to be cooking up for the Browns, but it's certainly interesting. Uh, I wonder who they're going to take a quarterback if they're going to take a quarterback because I find it hard to believe they're going to go with Cody Kessler at quarterback uh, starting next year, but Time will tell, obviously. There's two more days left in the draft. The most surprising thing for me, I was going to say the Browns, but it's actually it's got to be the Chicago Bears. I don't really know what they were thinking. I, I thought this was a pretty weak quarterback draft class along with many people. Yes, we could be proven wrong here, but trading up one spot to pick Mitch Trubisky was kind of something that I don't think anyone was expecting. And the Niners got a lot of good... Uh, they got a lot of good things out of that trade. I, I can't remember exactly what you said, but I know they got at least two, I think three picks, including the one that they just swapped uh, with Chicago. Uh, also kind of in- interesting because they just paid, what, 15 to $19 million to Mike Glennon to be the quarterback. So maybe they're going to have Trubisky ride the bench this year. I, I don't know. It's confusing. Right when you think the Bears are going to start trying to turn it around, they pull off this puzzling move. Uh, maybe it could work out for them, but I I don't think it will. And for the time being, the Niners look like the big winners on day one of the draft. Um, that's all I really have to say about the first round right now. We can have a more extensive episode on the draft later, but overall it was a pretty good day for the Steelers, don't you think, Austin? I think so. I, I would also like to mention that I really, uh, this is funny, but I really like who the other AFC North uh, teams took in terms of who we're going to play against because I I didn't fear Marlon Humphrey and uh, see now that Jabril Peppers is now on, on the Browns and uh, oh my gosh who's the Browns first pick Miles Garrett okay. of course Miles Garrett is the only one the only scary one and then I was hoping the Ravens would take him because I I think he's going to be the biggest bust ever but the Bengals ended up taking him so it's just as good but John Ross I was I was really happy with that that pick so i don't i honestly don't think the rest of the AFC north improved in in most areas but this, this is going to be great and also this was our one chance 
to get better than the Patriots since uh, the Patriots didn't have a, a first round pick. And I, I think we succeeded. I think I think we're a better team now. Not not than the Patriots. We're just a better team than we were. So. Time will tell how the rest of the NFL draft unfolds, but for the time being, if you want to check out uh, some Steelers news and draft news, follow us on Twitter at Stronger underscore Steel. Uh, check out our Facebook account at Stronger Than Steel Podcast. If you have any questions about the show or want to give us some feedback on our draft coverage or on these quick hitting episodes that we wanted to do for the draft, email us at Stronger Than Steel Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, that'll wrap things up for today. Austin, thank you for uh, sticking it out late with me today, and uh, glad to see that the Steelers got a pretty good pick in T.J. Watt. Hoping to do another one of these episodes again after tomorrow and the third day of the draft on Saturday. Austin, thank you again for joining me. Steeler Nation, hope you all have a great night and hope you are all happy with the pick of T.J. Watt, outside linebacker from Wisconsin. <laughs>